And here's what's breaking at 10 o'clock. Search efforts are underway for a missing three-year-old child in Independence. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rob Williams. Trisha is off tonight. Right now, crews are searching the area around Wayman Drive off of Madison Pike. Chancellor Wynn is there live and joins us with the latest. What do you know, Chance? Rob, what I can tell you is what you've basically already mentioned it is a three year old girl. We do know her name is Percy and she went missing around 714. That's what time the call went in to the police and that's about three hours ago. We're a little bit under three hours, but I want you to take a look at this scene because this is a massive search effort with multiple people out here volunteering their time trying to help find Percy. Now I want to give you a few details about her. Now she's three years old, biracial with tan skin. She has short, wavy, dark brown hair and she's currently last was wearing a black tank top with teal shorts and those shorts have unicorns on them. Now again, we do know she went missing right around 714 p.m. That's this tonight. That's when the call came in. And what we're told is that Percy was in her yard the last time she was seen. She was there with her mother, uh, other children from the neighborhood and other adults as well. Next thing they know, she was now missing and that call came into police. So now you have this massive search efforts. You have Independence Police, Campbell County Police, you have firefighters, uh, Campbell County EMA is out here. You also have multiple different people volunteering their time. In fact, Jared, if we could come this way just a tad, I want you to take a look down Madison Pike. This is Madison Pike, one of the bigger streets. It's busier here, but you can see the sheer number of people. I know it's going to be tough to show you how massive of an effort this search effort really is undergoing, but it's taking up. I would be not too far off to say this is a scene that stretches for miles. And of course, looking at this from an aerial view, a map, it is also worth noting that there are some small bodies of water, some ponds, a, sm a few smaller lakes. And I can tell you that recently I heard from a few, uh, a mother and her son who were out here looking that they were going down to a nearby park again, because Percy is three years old right now. We don't know where she is and a park could be a good starting point to continue looking at. We've also seen people looking in others backyards, looking inside of trees, looking on top of trees, really searching every possible outcome that they could really think of. And I want you to take a look because uh, I know it's be tough with it being dark here, but another police vehicle is pulling in right there, turning on to Madison Pike, but it's tough to see right now. I'm just trying to show you the sheer volume of these search efforts. You also have airport police is now here arriving on scene. That's from CVG. So you can really see they're calling in people from all over Northern Kentucky and these surrounding areas, just trying to get as many people looking for Percy and as many uh, the more people that we have looking for her, the better chance we have of finding her. And of course, while they're searching for Percy, they're, they're shouting her name, Percy, Percy, where are you? That's a common thing that we're hearing out here. And of course, it being now th nearly three hours into these search efforts, people are still a bit anxious and they're working with a lot of persistence and a lot of pace using their cell phones for light, using lights on their foreheads that they have strapped onto their heads. They have regular flashlights out here. There are families, as I mentioned, a mother and her young son who looked to be around eight or nine years old. He was kind of taking charge saying, let's, let's go to the park, mom. I think that's where a three-year-old might be hiding, might be at. And of course, right now you just have a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of concerns. And they're really asking for everybody around this area of independence. Again, Wayman Drive and Madison Pike. Wayman Drive is the last place that three-year-old Percy was seen. But of course, this is a busy intersection. I know there are officers out here trying to help control traffic and everything, but that makes you also a bit concerned. Uh, of course, we are going to be out here. We're going to be continuing to follow along with these search efforts. But there's one thing I can tell you is if you happen to know or find out any information about Percy's whereabouts, or if you're out here searching and you do locate her, just simply call Independence Police or you could even dial 911. But for now, reporting live in Independence with photojournalist Jared Darwish. I'm Chancellor Wynn, Fox 19 Now. Chance, before we let you go, because I know you're going to keep working the story, I have a couple of questions. The first one being, is this, I know Madison Pike is a main road, but is this a neighborhood? in terms of the feel of the area. And my second question is, where are these volunteers coming from? Are they driving there and pulling over to the side of the road and helping to search, or do they live nearby? So I'm not going to call it a neighborhood, but these are individual streets from Wayman Drive to these other dead end roads that are along Madison Pike. They have homes, they have houses, and most of these people that I'm seeing are from these homes and houses. But I can tell you, that's one thing that stood out to me when we pulled on to this area of Madison Pike. There are cars lining the side of the streets where people have driven here and have parked their cars. There's also a homeowner who was saying, I'm trying to make room in my driveway for more cars, anybody who needs to park here so they can get out and join these search efforts. But it really is a community of neighbors, people, 
families and others coming to this area. I mean, as I mentioned, the airport police showing up here, that just shows how they're really grasping for anybody to come out and help find Percy. I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but do you know what this three-year-old girl was doing when she went missing? Was she like in the yard playing with friends or was she on a walk? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what we're told is that she was in the yard with her mother, another adult, and some other young children, I would presume friends, and they were possibly on a trampoline. I know they were just kind of enjoying the evening. A few moments passed, and the next thing the parents know and the adults, they were like, Where, where's Percy? We can't find Percy, and immediately started searching and searching and calling 911 and then creating this obviously very decent-sized search effort. Because again, being three years old and the dark of the night, and I, as I mentioned, she's wearing a black tank top, teal shorts with those unicorns on them, but that, those dark colors can be tough to find. I know she has dark wavy hair, dark brown hair. That can also blend in in these nighttime areas. It's just very, very dark out here. There aren't a lot of streetlights along Madison Pike or really these side streets either. So this, this time frame, the darkness of what it is right now is really throwing a, another curveball, making it really tough for these search efforts. But with everybody bringing out flashlights, trying to light these areas, I mean, you even had a... Uh, a law enforcement had a, a mule, which is like an off-road type golf cart with large spotlights on the top of it, driving up and down these neighborhood streets. But as you might have heard, uh, there was a family that walked behind me, and I could hear the young son saying, Percy, Percy, they're calling out for her name. And that's going to continue, I'm sure, for hours tonight, or at least until we can actually locate and find Percy. Chance, the last question I'm going to ask you is, in all my years, I've been doing this job and covering breaking news in the tri-state, I have never ever seen a scene that is developing behind you have you i know my experience is not quite as well as yours as rob but i have never seen a scene like this and i'm i'm gonna refer to not just search efforts but even like criminal scenes and large mass of fires there's never been an outpouring of support or law enforcement or families or people coming out to take part in it. This is a massive scene. And I know we tried really hard to show you really the sheer size of this and the effort out there, but it's almost impossible to capture with a camera or a picture or even this video because it is a very large effort. I'm looking side by side because I keep seeing flashing lights, which are more police officers showing up and more law enforcement still arriving to the scene nearly three hours into these search efforts. All right. Chancellor Wynn is going to continue to follow that story for us. Chance, I, I know it's dark out there. You did a great job of showing us what it's like out there in Independence, and we thank you for that. Chance is going to stay on top of that story.